I'm Amy Morgan, the feature writer for the San Antonio Marriage Initiative. I am so excited today to introduce you to Julie and Greg Alexander. This local couple shares their story, speaking and mentoring others. They began in 1999 after their marriage on the brink of divorce was miraculously restored. After coming to understand and live out God's plan for marriage, they felt called to create the Alexander House, which allowed them to help others experience the same happiness and joy that they discovered in marriage. Recently, they've opened a new facility on 10 and a half acres in Bulverde with room for their marriage and family classes and workshops. Greg and Julie are guests once a month on Mornings on Marriage with Teresa Tomo on Catholic Connections on EWTN Radio. They have four sons, three daughters, four mm -hmm. grandsons, and one granddaughter. Julie, Greg, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you, Amy. Really appreciate you having us on. Yes, thank you so much. Well, we are just delighted. And really, your whole ministry, and you call it, you call it an apostolate, right? Because your, mm -hmm. your Catholic-based ministry just came from this, your own story. So could you tell us, I know I've heard you share before, so this is something that you feel comfortable sharing with others. Can you kind of tell us how, how everything happened? And, oh, and absolutely. In, in short, about 24 years ago, Julie and I had reached a point in our marriage, 10 years of marriage, where we felt we could not continue a marriage relationship. And uh, simply by uh, living by the ways of the world, if you will. You know, for me growing up, I was always taught that in order to be happy, in order to be successful, in order to be somebody, it was all about what you did for a living, how, money, how much money you made, and more importantly, what you did with that money. So materialistic things were very much an important thing in our lives. In fact, sometimes we joke and say, they were our God. Mm -hmm. And I say that because, Amy, we relied on those things to be the source of our happiness. But as you know, those things do not bring a long-term happiness, if you will. You buy the new car, you feel good for a moment, but that starts to subside. It's on to the next car, the next house, the next trip, the next whatever you can fill that void with. And once we can no longer find a happiness in other things, we both started looking for that happiness in other people. So infidelity became a big part on both of our behalves. And needless to say, when those secrets were discovered, we just simply concluded that if we're having to resort to this kind of behavior in a marriage, then there can't be much of a marriage left. And uh, Julie, on one of her weekly trips, she came home as I was living in Austin with our two kids at the time. She was working in Yellow Page Advertising in San Antonio, and she thought that the commute was getting to be a little bit taxing on her, so she made the decision to live in San Antonio. So on one of her trips home, I expressed to her that I was tired. And she looked at me and she said, I'm, I'm tired too. I, I can't wait to go to sleep in my own bed tonight. I said, no, you don't understand. I am emotionally tired. I want to get a divorce. And I don't even know if that's what I wanted, but those are the words that came from my mouth. However, her response was immediate. And she said, yeah, that's where we're living in our lives. I think we should get a divorce. Yeah, it's even chilling to sit here and listen to him tell our story. We've heard it 50 million times because we share it with everyone. And it's really unbelievable how far gone we were, how so little we knew about God, his plan and all that. But I remember my response was quick because it was just, we were so living divided, if you will, not separated, but you know, on opposite ends of the spectrum of not even sharing anything in common really. Um, and so I remember the feeling I had is going, oh my gosh, I could not let my parents know they would kill me. <laughs> there was that whole thing. There was not a divorce on that whole entire side of my family for what, four generations. four generations. And I was like, there's no way that I want to be the first one at all. So I was like, I need to do something. And I crawled up the stairs, called our parish priest, said, father, we need to come see you. We need to set up an appointment for tomorrow. We're in trouble. He said, okay, great. I have an appointment tomorrow at 1030. We went into his office. He started to share with us, come sit down. Well, how can I help you? We're in trouble. We want to get a divorce. And we are just here to have you help us get out of it. He had no clue what to say, what to do, but sent us to a therapist, a Christian therapist that we went to for $100 history lesson. And basically he told us how our marriage was like the Civil War. Greg is going to be like the North. Julie, you're always going to be like the South. And sometimes you need to recognize that maybe you really weren't meant to be together. Oh. That'll be a hundred dollars and you want to make an appointment in two weeks. And we're like, 
For what? No. Because <laughs> yeah. the doubt that had been planted back then, that seed just went further. And we both were like, we've married the wrong person. What are we going to do? Yeah. Definitely. So we went home and told our kids um, what this good therapist told us. Hey, mom and dad are kind of like kids. We argue and we fight. Guys, some of you, you've heard some of the arguments and we made the decision to get a divorce. And despite the fact that they were huddled in the corner in our bedroom, embracing each other, Amy, and, and literally crying their eyes out. And we just dismiss it. Oh, they'll be fine. You know, if they grow up and manifest any problems or issues, we'll just send them to counseling. That's what Bob and Mary down the street did. And, and they seem to be okay. And again, just illustrating how wholehearted we have become because we didn't even take in consideration their well-being in, in this decision. And so um, but one of the good things, we continue to go to church every Sunday. And this particular summer, we had a visiting priest that came in and filled in for our pastor for the whole summer. And the best I can express it, he was just a great teacher of the faith, uh, proclaiming the gospel, touching our hearts. Our hearts were on fire. We went from barely making it to church on time to moving up to the front row and just captivated by his, his homilies. And so we started meeting with him in between the two church services and learned that he was the tribune of vicar for the diocese. Now, in a Catholic faith, we didn't know anything else, but we at least knew this is the guy that does that annulment thing. <laughs> and maybe God is blessing us with this, this awesome priest to become our friend because surely he's going to show us how to get out of this marriage. Wow. So we made an appointment to see him, and uh, he thought we were coming by for a social visit as we started are starting this new relationship. But for the next 45 minutes or so, we proceeded to build our case as to why we felt we no could no longer stay married. She's done this. He's done this. The lying, the cheating, the backstabbing, everything involved. And the poor guy is like he was watching a tennis match as we were volleying the false and blame back and forth. But he just sat there and listened and didn't say a word. And he leaned forward when we finished. And he said, look, guys, I understand your plight and your situation. Let me ask you a few questions. What is God's plan for marriage? What does the church teach about marriage? What are some of the writings of St. Paul pertaining to the sacrament of marriage? And we're like, we don't know. And no what does it got to do with us? We go to church every Sunday. We used to be in love. Now we're not. And we were simply hoping that you can show us how to get out of this thing and, and start over somewhere else down the line. He said, ah, but what I suggest is that you go home and find the answers to the questions that I've asked before I make a final, before we make a final decision. And to make a long story short, I went home. I pulled out the Bible for the first time. I think I had to dust the dust off a little bit. <laughs> but I started with St. Paul and Ephesians. And I remember turning to, um, uh, the uh, I think, it's chapter 5, verse 22, I believe. And it says, wives, be submissive to your husbands. And my immediate thought was, here's the problem in our marriage. <laughs> this is it. She's Love out working out all the time, character. trying to become this fitness queen and want to make a million dollars. She's just not doing anything I want her to do in this marriage. <laughs> so needless to say, I found this newfound Bible to be some pretty cool stuff. So <laughs> let me go back and read and get some more ammunition. Because there's another verse right after that. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Which I didn't know existed until this moment. And I went back and it said, but husband, love your wives like Christ loved the church. I'm like, like Christ loved the church, man, Christ died for the church. Am I dying to myself for some of the things she's wanting and desiring in this marriage? And unfortunately, the answer was no. But Amy, for the, for the first time, it had really begun to dawn on me that maybe my own selfishness was contributing to the breakdown and demise of our marriage. And uh, literally for two days, I'm just sitting there reading and studying what God and the church have to say about marriage. And the second evening, I called Julie into the room and said, Julie, come here. I want to show you what God's plan for marriage is. And I said, it's nothing like what we're doing. No wonder we're messing it up. We're not even coming close to living. It's this whole dying to self for the other person. How, how do you do that? And so I spent about 30 minutes overviewing with her some of the things I was finding. But what I was finding in her is she was just as much in awe as I was. In fact, she turned. She said, this is incredible. What, what do we do? And just instinctively, I said, maybe we need to pray. And at that point, again, 10 years married, two kids, wonderful jobs, all the toys we needed or wanted, but we had never gone to God to even say thank you for those things. So I took her by the hand and I got on our knees. I said, Heavenly Father, we tried living our marriage based upon the things we think we should do, and it doesn't work. 
And so, Father, we've also tried living by the ways of the world. And, and as you know, that too doesn't work. And said, Heavenly Father, more than anything in the world, right here, right now, we sincerely invite you into our lives to show us how you want us to live marriage. And if you deliver us from this evil, we will commit the rest of our lives working in some kind of marriage or family ministry. <laughs> and so the next day, uh, next day, the next week, we both went in, resigned from our corporate jobs and just committed ourselves to, to God's call to, to begin helping other couples come to learn what we learned. That is, a, uh, that's a, a 180. <laughs> oh man, is that... I mean, we were all in, not just we're okay, we're going to retreat from this divorce idea. Yeah. We were, we're going to change. I mean, you had just, had you even discussed, yes, we're going to make it. Yes. We're going to stay married. I guess so. Right. And right. then all of a sudden, boom, you're going to lead. When you prayed that prayer though, Greg, I, I know the work that you do with couples, you being plural, you, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have you talk about that, but I could only imagine how many times you've prayed a prayer like that with broken couples oh my goodness. and how somebody in our marriage champions, somebody is going to be watching this and they're going to be inspired to pray just because of your example right there. Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And it's one of the things we express to the couples we do work with is that we have to go back to the creator who created all this. And why in the world do we think that living it the way that we think we should, apart from what God's plan is, that everything's going to be OK? In fact, I go even further when they come to see us as they're in trouble. I said, you know, many times God allows the difficult times, these turbulent times to serve as a wake up call, you know. Wake up, Greg and Julie. It's not about the job. It's not about the money. It's not about the stuff. It's about me. I need to be front and center in your lives. I need to be that guiding star. And until we start to go back in prayer and grow and cultivate this line of communication with the Heavenly Father, we we just don't we don't get it. And uh, and anything apart from what He wants for us, we should want for ourselves. Yeah, and, and one of the things I'll share so dramatically changed and shifted in my heart. Um, it was amazing because there was so much wounds and hurts and pains caused. And it, it was just, it was so not good. And I would always say we did everything wrong you could ever do in a marriage. And the moment that he, as the leader of the home, the prayer leader, asked me to get on my knees and took me by the hand and said that prayer, Literally, it was like this fire that just began in my heart and just literally, it just like changed everything right there. I saw everything in a new light when he said, deliver us from this evil and we will commit the rest of our lives. I mean, we didn't know what we were going to do. We just knew that what we were doing was not good. And we wanted to try change and turn away from that, which is the, you know, sinning and turning away. We were, we repented, not even really realizing and yet each step was a trust and faith in God, even though we didn't know what it looked like. We didn't know what we were, where we were going to go, what we were going to do. We just said, no matter what, we're not doing it our way anymore. We're going to invite God by his invitation. And literally my heart exploded for him that day more than ever, because all of a sudden it was this whole understanding is when he went to God, my heart was able to trust, to believe, to have hope. It was just a total transformation. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah. Well, and then you guys immediately when you pledged your your life and your work to God, He brought people to you, right? So, yes. so because and again too, I love that your story is not tied up with a pretty bow in a package. It you <laughs> it, you know it because as you shared, you know, in in different events that I've heard you talk, most people's stories are not tied up in a bow with a pretty package. There was so much hurt uh, and so much brokenness. And you have told stories of people who, I think there was somebody who was married and divorced twice, right? And they, <laughs> and so, I mean, maybe we'll have time to share that story, but you guys really work with people, you know, and I wanna talk about this journey of how you've done this. You've worked with people who who really their story is is not just oh we need a little enrichment here. You've oh. worked with people who are who are definitely even past the break. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yes. And, and what's so interesting in many of those instances when those couples come to see us, they come through saying things like, "Well, I hope you're good. You're our last hope. This is our last shot. Uh, you better know how to do this stuff." And mm -hmm. I'm like, "The pressure's not on me. It's on you guys and your commitment to the process." 
Julie and I are committed to work with you. I said, but our Heavenly Father is always committed to your marriage relationship. Mm -hmm. So it takes your yes coupled with his grace that's going to allow for the miracles to take place. We're, mm -hmm. we're just the mere instruments that God has chosen to utilize to help uh, deliver the information of what they need to do. And I was telling them, you still got to do it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people do come in. They think you're going to wave this magic wand and, and everything is going to be okay. And, and I love a, a phrase Julie coined many years ago. She said, marriage works when we work at it. And so there are things that we indeed have, indeed have to do in order for us to be complicit with what God wants us to do. And in my opinion, so that the grace is there that allows us to be able to, to communicate again, to forgive, and to once again, not only experience the love we have, but to have it to be many, many times more deeper and greater than we had when we bring God back into the equation where he should have been in the first place. Yeah. Yes. It's incredible how we see that we come from two totally separate worlds. You know, I was raised in my family. He was raised in his. We have all these differences. And then we have people coming together and they don't realize that, OK, all of a sudden, let's just get married because you're cute and you're handsome and you're beautiful. And it's like that lasts about five minutes. It's like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> what have we done? Because people don't understand the preparation that goes into it. They don't understand. We as parents don't realize or recognize the, the great um, responsibility. responsibility and the promise that we made to God to show our children who he is by the way that we live our marriage. So our marriage is marriage preparation for these little children that grow up to then one day want to get married. And it's amazing, sad, and unfortunate that most couples that come to us who are wanting to get married and follow God's plan have never seen it modeled in their home or in their life. Well, that, that and I will say of all your, your children, you are such an example. Two of your daughters, your grown daughters, do work with you. Yes, yes. yes, that's a huge testimony. Tell us a little bit now. You do retreats and you have kind of a, a, a six part uh, training process. T talk about some of the things that you created and you kind of created all this from the ground up, right? Yeah, well, actually, God already had it. He just downloaded it to me once <laughs> I plugged into the mainframe. And, and in all honesty, because as we were coming back in our marriage, making a decision to stay in our marriage, and we quit our jobs. Of course, we had to start looking for these odd jobs to, to generate some type of revenue. So my promise to God was that if he continued to allow us to find these opportunities, I would continue to read and study on a daily basis. And so every day I pull out scripture and uh, or the Holy Spirit would take me to a certain aspect of communication and whatnot. But I would always pray for us. Heavenly Father, send me your Holy Spirit to reveal to me what you want me to know as I read this chapter, this verse, whatever it was that I was reading. And Amy, and every day as I would read and, and I close my eyes and the Holy Spirit would just start downloading. And so I would start writing, start writing. So literally everything we did to allow for our marriage to be redeemed in Christ came from the Holy Spirit. And so I didn't create all of this programming. It's just that I've been smart enough not to change what the Holy <laughs> Spirit gave me. <laughs> we figured if it worked for us, it could work for everybody else. Yes. In fact, in the last 24 years now, Julie and I personally have worked with over 5,000 couples in this process. And to date, there's only been 37 couples we haven't been able to help come back to a happy and holy, joyful marriage. And again, it's just a great testament to what God had. He's the creator. <laughs> he knows what it should look like. All we have to do is go back and read the book and learn how to, to make it applicable to our lives. But uh, so the Marriage Disciples program is that, if you could say that, that flagship program that we yeah. have that couples know us for in terms of helping other couples on a couple of couple basis come to understand and live God's plan for marriage. Not just teaching them intellectually what they need to do, but also accompanying that information with the practical things they have to do and say in the context of their home to be who and what God has called them to be as husband and wife. Uh, we take that same information and we also have a one day marriage workshop, taking those what I call the six essential elements to a strong marriage and, and allowing them to understand God's plan for marriage, God's plan for chastity and sex in a marriage relationship, forgiveness and healing in marriage. To which I always say, anyone who's been married more than five minutes knows the importance <laughs> of forgiveness and healing in the marriage relationship. But then we also teach them what it means to be that servant spouse. And then we give some tips and tools on communication, but we weave spirituality throughout the whole process. Again, those ways of coming to understand God has to be number one because he is the source and grace for who and what we need to be for each other. 
then we work to perfect that grace we receive from him to be who, what we need to be as husband and wife. And then spilling on over into our children, our communities and our church and all over the world. If we, if we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just, just awesome. So those are kind of the main two programs that we, we conduct. Uh, now having this campus, we're able to offer additional things as well. So we had uh, our first uh, St. Raphael Reconciliation and Healing Retreat for post-aborted men and women as well. And, and that was a powerful first time event that we hosted to see these people who have been carrying that, that weight from the abortions that they had received and now once finally in their life, finding that true healing to, to get over that pain and really more importantly, understand the forgiveness that God has extended to them for that sin once, once repented. And um, quick story, we had a lady who came to the last event, uh, had her abortion 48 years ago. And Amy, in these last 48 years, you know, the trials and tribulations she's had in her life carrying that burden and to, that one day, to see that face lit up like a light bulb and a smile all over the place and just expressing the joy and happiness mm -hmm. and, and knowing that she was reunited with her Heavenly Father and just, just an awesome event. Yeah. Well, I am so glad that you brought up your new uh, your new facility there because you've got a beautiful area right there in Boulevardy. Let's talk a little bit about that and tell again how that's going to allow you to do, I know you have some family things. Let's talk about your facility and then what, what's going to get, what's going on there. Cause it's already, it's already started and you guys live there too, right? Y'all, you yeah, we live as well. Yes. How many kiddos? Four, four or five still there? Living with uh, you? Oh yeah. Yeah. We have four. We had still. to check with each other. <laughs> Cause that's you. We have, we have kids trouble. and we have grandkids. We have yes. four grandkids running around. So there's kids all over the place and it's hard to tell cause they all look like me, oh. which was after mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny you are yeah. beautiful children i have oh, seen them you. absolutely we are gorgeous. beyond well, blessed that's because yes. they have a beautiful mom thanks oh, be to god it wasn't left you. up to me for their looks <laughs> it, it's amazing because we always talk about how the children are the crowning glory of the marriage relationship and uh we have a pretty good crown <laughs> <laughs> after we messed it up so bad god just continues to bless so it's amazing how here in Bulverde, uh, we, we found this property. It's just amazing, perfect. So we have an office that we office out of here. Um, we also have an area where uh, when we do our workshops, couples come, they eat here. So they bring their own lunch or they we order lunch and they do. It's Cana Cafe. Um, and then we have a coffee house, Heavenly Grounds Coffee House, and it's all self-serve. And um, people come in and they talk, they do um, Bible studies, they have, they just gather for meetings, but it's so cool to have people just come and meet and start sharing their lives and themselves and they're sharing Jesus with each other. It is so cool. And then uh, St. Joseph's workshop is, uh, used to be this man's workshop and we literally left it St. Joseph's workshop to work on the, the soul and the heart of these individuals and people. And so it's where we do our presentations. But what I love, love, love about what we do is God has blessed us so much with amazing people to donate to our organization. We're a 501c3. So we don't charge for any of the programs that we give to these people. Our services are free of charge because we know that a lot of times marriages come in their brokenness. And oftentimes it is the finances. It is, it's the last thing that they need to be concerned with is how are we going to pay because a lot of people don't go to counseling because they can't don't think they can afford it so it's such a great blessing for the donors we have to allow us to be able to do that yeah and, and the only thing i want to add to what julie said if you come to the property now you'll see in the front we have this big area that we just recently put astroturf in and we're working on the fence because we're going to do monthly events for families and and not really being concerned with any kind of curriculum or anything like that, but just for families to come out and fellowship and enjoy like-minded brothers and sisters in Christ. And mm -hmm. uh, so we're really excited about that. But we, we had an event a couple months ago where we had uh, over 150 people here just doing just that, hanging out, getting to know and enjoying mm -hmm. each other and sharing their life in Christ. It's just a beautiful experience. Oh, that is so wonderful. And, and again, too, just, and you just had a, a was it a workshop? It was just a, a last week or two, 20 companies you said? Uh, just, well, the last one was just Saturday. We, we had, since the first time we saw you, we've had one since then. And, and we keep it limited, or I should say maxed out limited 
to 20 couples because it gives us a time throughout the day to really spend with the couples individually. Uh, if there's any additional help or assistance they need that they don't want to talk about in, in the group setting. Mm -hmm. So so 20 is that magic number. And uh, just again, phenomenal um, uh miracles for lack of better words that happened as a result in fact one of the couples we had actually came from an update that uh san antonio marriage initiative put out which is how they found out about the event yeah, so uh i almost said their names but they, they sat front row oh, <laughs> and smiled yeah. the whole time yeah and what's so amazing about the workshops is we honestly it is literally to strengthen your marriage so we have couples coming that the husband's like, what do you mean? Why are we going? We don't have any problems in our marriage. And, it, and it's like that whole thing, that misnomer of people thinking if you're going to a workshop, there must be something wrong. Well, no, it's to strengthen. But there are those that come that are in trouble, that are struggling, that are having issues that they have not been able to discuss or talk about. And then there's ones that are that they get here and they realize, oh, my goodness, we had no idea that God's plan for marriage was this. And so we need to change some things. So it's cool to see the different dynamics, but at the same point, you see all of them kind of converging in a sense, or con they converse with each other because they don't really take the time to do it at home or they don't know what to talk about. So we have them here captive. They go out to their exercises and come back. And now they go home and take those exercises that we give them as tools to use for the rest of their marriage. Absolutely. I love it. And you do some training too, right? For marriage champions. You yeah. have a whole intake process of how you identify those who are ready to take that next step. Well, you know, what, what was pretty cool is that we stopped identifying and, and picking and choosing. We waited for God to touch their hearts, to call them to us. And so all of the, well, the again, marriage disciples we have working with us now are all individuals who felt that call and reached out to us. And it's been a beautiful process in training these guys because we were inundated back up until about six months ago, we had about a seven month waiting list for couples to get to us. And now we have seven different additional couples trained all the way from New York, all the way down to Alabama and everything in between. Uh, and we now have it both in English and in Spanish as well. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so God has just, just graced us all over the place with now people to come and to help carry the load. And another beautiful thing is that the people that come one of the requirements we have is that they, their marriage has had to have been in difficult times at some point in time in the relationship. Because as we receive the couples that come in with the varying degrees of problems, we're able to match them up with someone who has walked in their shoes. And there's nothing like sitting across the table from someone who has understood what you're going through, has been there, done that, and have come out and survived on the other side. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful to see. We have Robin Zamora who helps in the in the marriage disciple um, training, and she's the marriage discipling director, director, <laughs> director of marriage disciples. And it's so cool because she too came from that struggle, that that getting over over issues in their marriage as everybody does. And she came to us 12 years ago and said, I want to do whatever I can to just give because what you're doing is so important. And she's so good with these people because in training them and understanding and picking the, those that call her and she spends so much time speaking to she she partners them with a really good couple that matches their issues that they're going through. It's just really beautiful to see. Well, that is such a testimony. And I could just see how our marriage counselors that and, and marriage champions and, and people who are listening, that they really just to connect with you because you, like you said, Robin helps get them just right to the right person and everyone has struggles. And mm -hmm. and truly some of the ones that you have relayed and, and also when we've talked before, they're, they're every bit of bad, hairy one that you could ever imagine. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. That yeah. then God puts these people through you, puts these people back together is just amazing. It really yeah. is. Exactly. And that's one of the things, too, for those that are watching is to come to understand. I don't care how difficult your marriage is or what you're having to, to encounter or get over in your marriage. All we have to do is, is, is give it to God. Yeah, I think as Christ said in Revelations, you know, I can make all things new again. And, and if we, we turn it over to our Lord and Savior and allow him and God to be front and center in our lives, they, they can help us get through all of those difficulties, even those things that we thought we can never get through. Or even as we say, well, we're going to be together, but I'll, I'll, I know I can never love you the way that I did when we first came together. And I can't. I love her even more. Which is so obvious to anyone who sees it's just all over both of your faces, uh, the truth of that and how God has restored your marriage and brought you 
five more children. (laughs) Really, really. It's amazing. It's so cool to see the older two with the younger five and how they come together. And we, we did our family gatherings are filled with much noise and joy, but we just truly, yes. And we're just grateful for our older two who had to put up with the stuff, literally just very painful for them. But now they're just, they, they support, they love, they do everything with, with us in our ministry to support it, but also with the five younger kids. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Which I don't mind. I think it's worth noting because after a second child, I was in the military and I actually had undergone a vasectomy because we thought we didn't want any more kids. However, as we begin to come back to God and Christ in our lives, I, I felt as if I usurped his power and took into my own hand this decision as to whether or not we should have any more kids. And what is so awesome is that the, the urologist who did my reversal, he said, because of the time frame from the, the vasectomy to now that reversal, we don't have a 20 percent chance of ever conceiving again. But God has showed him it wrong. <laughs> <Too> wrong <today. laughs> exactly. So, so yeah. So. The river is full, and your children are living this legacy of their parents and their wonderful ministry that you have. And I know, I, I wish we had more time because I would love to to tell that beautiful or have you tell that beautiful story of your daughter. Um, but another time, and it has been so great to talk to you. Thank you both so much for being here. Oh, thank you, well, thank you so much and, you know, for what you do and what for Sammy does. And, you know, again, there, there's so much, um, what I want to say, competition people feel in, in this world. And, and we really have to come to understand we're not building Sammy's kingdom for marriage. We're not building the Alexander house for marriage. We're building God's plan for marriage. And so it is awesome to work with you guys as we have for many years, Carl, oh my goodness, incredible, as you know, but to be able to come together in those many ways to kind of share and to help each other in the work that God has called us all to do. So thank you. Yeah. Well, rising tide lifts all boats, as we talked before, and it's great. And marriage champions, if you want to contact the Alexander House and get in touch with Greg and Julie, you can always find us at samarriage.org.